Plate chillers, like the Thermonator from Blickman Engineering, are a way to take your wort from boiling down to room temperature in just a matter of seconds. In this video, we'll show you the top eight tips and tricks for getting the most out of your plate chiller. Tip number one, quick disconnects. You're gonna be plugging in four hoses to this. One for the wort to go in, one to go out, and then one each for the water to come in and out as well. Quick disconnects make this whole process a whole lot easier, so you'll want quick disconnects for the silicon used for the wort, and you'll want quick disconnects on your hoses that are bringing cold water into and out of the plate chiller. Tip number two is put the plate chiller on a tray. When you're connecting and disconnecting hoses, there is going to be water and it's gonna end up on your floor if you do not have something to collect it. Collect it on a tray. Tip number three, when adding hops to your brew, use a hop spider. The hop spider will stop all of the hops as they get broken down during the boil from getting caught up inside of your plate chiller, which Trust me, you do not want to do, it takes a lot of effort to clean it. Tip number four is for sanitizing. There's several ways you can sanitize a plate chiller, including running star sand through it, but one of the easiest and the most effective ways i found is to just use the hot boiling wort to sanitize it. So from about 10 minutes from the end of the boil, connect the boil kettle to the wort in on the plate chiller, and then run another cable from the wort out of the plate chiller back into the boil kettle and recirculate. The hot boiling wort will do a great job of sanitizing that plate chiller. The next tip, uh, what are we at, number, number five, is to use a inline thermometer to measure the temperature of the wort as it comes out of the plate chiller. I'm using the Blickman through meter. Now one thing to remember about these inline thermometers, and particularly this one, is you can't use it during the sanitizing stage. You cannot run boiling wort through one of these things. It needs to be partially cooled. So you'll need to sanitize this separately using something like StarSan. To regulate the temperature, use the lever on your pump to regulate how much water is passing through the plate chiller. The faster it goes through, the warmer it's gonna be. If you need to cool it further, then reduce the speed of the flow through your pump and you can keep an eye on this again using this inline thermometer. A plate chiller uses the temperature of tap water to reduce the temperature overall of the wort. And if in the summer months your tap water is really not that cold, then the effectiveness of your plate chiller will be reduced. What you can do in that situation is to combine the plate chiller with an immersion chiller. Place your immersion chiller in a bucket full of icy water and then connect it to the water supply. Then connect the other end of the immersion chiller to your plate chiller. The water that the plate chiller will be receiving now will be a little bit colder than the water that came directly out of the tap and it should make it more efficient. So when you're finished with the plate chiller, the next thing you need to do is clean it. And the best way to do that is to first of all backwash, which is to say to reverse the wort in and the wort out tubing. This is going to generate a little bit of water spillage, which is exactly why you want to use a tray. And bonus tip for this one, don't forget the heat proof gloves, because those quick releases are going to be hot. And lastly, tip number, number eight, when you're done cleaning the plate chiller and you've backwashed, you need to remember to drain it. Simply tip it up on its side, and let the water drain out. So that's it for my top eight tips for using a plate chiller. If you've got any of your own, share them in the comments section. And for more homebrew how-to videos, hit the subscribe button.